It's now, if you are looking for a lender, okay, keep in mind this has to be an entity, okay? Um, Yoav Gilead, I interviewed him on the channel, okay, uh, last year. Get a hold of him. He does short term hard money, he also does long term DSCR loans, okay? Hard money is basically a DSCR loan, it's the same thing. A DSCR loan basically goes by the property and not your income. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, you still got to qualify for it and you still have to have the reserves and so on and so forth. But I 100% recommend you do that. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you, Dean, is, is have you seen it where some people are, are saying, yeah, I'll be all cash. They do it with hard money and then they want to they want to uh, refinance into a long-term uh, mortgage, say a Fannie, Freddie Mac, so on and so forth, after doing what's called the Burr strategy, mm -hmm. okay? Now, one thing that I think it's Fannie or is it Freddie right now that just changed their seasoning period? I'm, I'm trying to One of the two, Fanny or Freddie, I can't remember which, they're just changing their seasoning period from six months for a cash out refi to 12 months. Yeah, I've not heard that one. <clears throat> yeah, so it's either Fanny or Freddie Mac, I can't remember which, and it's actually happening pretty soon. Um, they're changing it, going the seasoning period for from six months to a year. Yeah, well, you know, when government entities start doing things like that, you got to ask yourself why. Like, yep. Like, think that through. And I'm not going to attempt to do it right now because I just, you know, that's going to be a lot of dead space, yeah. you know. Um, but why? Why are these guys doing that? Mm -hmm. What's the question? You know, and I think that's a real nice transition, you know, to market conditions. People Correct. are like, yeah. okay, like, market's going to crash is the market going to crash interest rates are high i mean i've seen like again I, I mentioned this earlier but you see it firsthand where interest rates spike people freak out don't know sky's falling and then the market levels out a little bit next thing you know you're in a hot market well, but truly what do we need to watch what's going to make the market really take a dump well yeah we need uh, what if we have really really high interest rates you know mm -hmm. will people still buy houses yes people will still buy houses it will the, i imagine the velocity will slow yes okay um well what else job loss people stop you know buying buying houses because they don't have any money i mean that's what one, one thing that can you know slow down a, a market right people the, the ability for people to purchase yep Okay. Um, supply, you know, that was one thing. Actually, I was just um, looking at the numbers for Rochester Hills, and you look at, uh, you know, 21, 2021 versus 2022, and actually, in some cases, um, you know, some very particular neighborhoods, the markets even go backwards. Yeah. Um, but, but why? Why, why do they go backwards? I mean, there's a lot of different reasons. Yeah. But when you just, I guess, in that particular situation, I think a lot of it has to do with the inventory. Um, you know, it, it, it just, it slows because of the lack of inventory, lack of quality inventory, all that stuff. So, um, there, I mean, there's that stuff. Another one, which ties in nicely with supply, is the foreclosure numbers, right? We track these every week. All right, we have our VA pull them directly from the legal news. And I'm telling you, the foreclosures have not spiked. I and mean, we've got about a thousand in yeah. the whole state of Michigan every month. That's They're controlling it. They're controlling them coming out. The thing is, is that what I've seen is because if they go into foreclosure, there's two things that will happen. One, they'll do some sort of creative financing, okay? Or some sort of uh, loan modification. Sure. Okay. 
um, or two, they'll sell it out because the because they got equity in the house. Okay, um, you know, so it's kind of really out there now. I want to come back to this. Andrew, a Andrew, Christine gave uh, the link here. It is Freddie Mac that came out with the with the new guidelines, okay. and it is actually on um, cash out. It's effective on cash out uh, refinance loans originating after March seventh, twenty twenty three. So that's going to be going fine. Yeah, it's you know it's crazy, but how that how does that affect? Well, as you, as a wholesaler, how does that affect you? You, it doesn't affect you as a wholesaler, but you know who does affect your buyers. So you have to know all the rules, okay? As a, as a wholesaler, so you know what strategies they're using. You know, it's going to knock some of those buyers out of contend, contending, be, because they're not going to be able to cash out refi. They're not going to be able to get their money back. You know, now they can go different routes, of course, you know, but at the same point, they're not going to get the better rates from the, the Freddie Mac. You know, they can go Fannie for now, but how soon is Fannie going to uh, going to change over? I'm sure they're following suit. You know, they're they're very it's, similar yeah. entities. Exactly. So, um now, so we'll go kind of, and I didn't mean to kind of sidetrack here. Um, going back to what you're saying, you know, with every area is different. You look at California, mm -hmm. you know, they are, their percentages in, in, are dropping like it's hot. You versus in the Metro Detroit area, we're not dropping as much. I'm not saying we're not dropping, but our values are not dropping as bad as out there in California. What's the reasoning why? Our job market, the labor market, we still need people here, okay? Out there, most of the, the, the workers out there still need to be, or are remote so they can live anywhere. So what are they gonna do? We're gonna move somewhere else and still keep our job, you know? Um, or yeah. they got laid off from the big tech yeah. and, and moved to a different place and worked for another worked at home place. You never know. You know? So look at all these options um, and kind of go from there. But what would you... So what areas would you recommend? Like, would you recommend with ARVs higher like uh, more luxury end, would you, re you know, like kind of where, where would you recommend somebody starting as far as doing a buy and hold? Oh, buy and hold? Um, yeah. I would, I want to make sure that the numbers work. Like yeah. that, that's, that's the bottom line, right? Make sure that there's industry around, you know, Amazon's hot, right? But you understand that if you're looking at a $150,000 house, and it just meets the one percent rule. Uh, I mean, it, it may, the, if you really boil the numbers down, it might not work. Right. Okay? So now, why do we go back and bring up the HUDUser.gov site? Okay. So you can look at your numbers. All right. So now let's go back to Tracy's example. I got fifty thousand dollars to spend. Okay. Fifty thousand dollars all in, and I can get. Thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars a month rent on that thing. Mm -hmm. If it's a three bedroom, yep. Geez, if if the vouchers will pay fifteen hundred, which is what it says, it was yep. like thirteen seventy seven was what it was last year. Um, so add one hundred and fifty. You know, it's insane. Um, but if you just take a thirteen hundred, right? And then you divide that into your cost. What's your return? Well, if you just double it, fifty thousand dollar house, two percent rule, one hundred thousand dollar purchase. Mm -hmm. So you're almost like two point three. Like the numbers are really appear to be good. Well, then at that point, you just make sure that you're buying the right house and 
you know, yep. you have inspected, you're, you got boots on the ground, especially if you're buying from out of state, you know? So yeah. focus on your cash flow. The, the area, um, you know, that's a conversation for your property manager. Is your property manager gonna, gonna do business in these areas? Mm -hmm. You have to decide, do you want appreciation? Okay, one of the things that you learn early from Robert Kiyosaki is that, listen, if you know, appreciation happens, that's icing on the cake, right? You buy for cash flow. Cash flow is king. And especially in this market where we're at, you know, you say you buy too high, okay? Say, you know what? I overpay. Okay, yep. I overpay and I, I get into a property, but guess what? It's giving me $500 a month in cash flow. After CapEx, after this, after that, it's giving me five. Then guess what? Who says you're overpaying? Okay, who, who cares? You're getting $500 a month, right? That's making you money while you're sleeping. Okay, as long as you're putting money aside for your capital expenditures, your maintenance, your vacancy, your all of that, and you're still cash flowing. Okay, now I the numbers that most people go by is right around three hundred dollars a month. Okay, it, for the cash flow after they take all their expenses out. All right, that's yeah. a good deal. And realistically. Real, realistically, where you're going to get that done is you're going to get that done in the city. Yeah. And thank you to Andrew Castine, by the way, who gave me the uh, link. This is the link on the screen right now uh, for what you were talking about, the HUDuser.gov. Yeah, there you go. That's it. This is the link right here. Thank you, Andrew, for putting in work and, and, and posting the link. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. So, um, and I think Tracy, that's why you wanted to do in Detroit is because of that, and you were doing the the lower percentage. But keep in mind, you know, like I would probably go a little bit higher in that and see if I can get myself into a duplex. That way, you can get, you know, I get higher cash flow. You know, so that's up to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've been through the um, MLS, so I'm an agent. I've been an agent for many years, right? Um, geez, you're you're looking about fifty thousand dollars a door if you're turnkey, at least. Yep. You know, minimum. Sometimes you can find these fourplexes, you know. And I'm telling you that that's our first property ever was a duplex, cash flow and duplex, mm -hmm. and uh, I should have bought more. Yeah, but we bought it right. The numbers worked. You know, twelve hundred bucks a month rent at that particular point in time was an eighty thousand dollar purchase. Yep. Now present day, I mean, that thing. I'm not going to tell you how much it makes, but uh, we'll never sell that thing. Yeah, and and that's the good thing about being buy and hold investor is you don't have to sell. And you know, I'm starting off a wholesale wholesaling is not an end all be all game and anybody who tells you it is i'm sorry they're wrong it's work it's work it's constant you're trading one job for another what yep. i'm using wholesaling for is one bringing this community together two i'm going to eventually own my own rentals okay and three, it, it allows me the money that I'm bringing in from wholesaling to get my own home renovated, my personal home. <laughs> so, hey, and by doing that, I'm learning it. I, I've learned so much by doing my own home renovation. It's made me a better wholesaler. I'm able to price out renovations a lot better and actually be, you know, with my buyers and, and talk with them and, and get hey yeah you're pretty close on the pricing you know and before i started that i was way off and i realized that so 
my always always my recommendation if you're just starting out if you think you're going to spend twenty thousand dollars for a renovation plan on spending 40. that's just it's the reason if you don't use that plan on spending 40 and if you don't use it great but mistakes are going to happen you know